Once upon a time, there was a wise and kind king who ruled his kingdom with a big heart. He didn't just sit on his throne all day. He liked to visit the villages and towns, meeting the people and listening to their stories. If anyone had a problem, the king made sure to solve it right away. Whether it was a farmer struggling with crops, or a merchant facing trouble in the market, his people loved him, not just because he was their king, but because he truly cared. Everywhere he went, people felt happy. And his kingdom thrived because of his kind rule. One day, the king and his wise minister walked through a village. And they saw that the bakery was empty. The baker rushed toward them, looking worried. Your Majesty, a strange rumor is spreading. The baker said. People say the bread from my bakery is cursed. Whoever eats it will lose their voice. The king raised an eyebrow. Has anyone lost their voice yet? No. But everyone's too scared to eat it. The baker replied. The minister smiled and said, Let's solve this now. He bought a loaf, tore off a piece, and took a bite. Delicious. The minister said loudly. The king laughed, took a piece himself, and said, Tastes fine to me. And look, I'm still speaking. The villagers, seeing the king and minister unharmed, laughed and gathered to buy bread. No curse here. The king said warmly. Just a little fear. The village filled with relief, and soon, the bakery was back in business. Michael lived in a small hut with his wife and two children in the village. They were very poor, and each day was a struggle to make ends meet. Michael worked as a carpenter and had a small shop. But recently, there was no work available. Michael sat in his small shop, staring at the empty doorway, hoping for a customer. Finally, a man walked in and said, I need a new chair. Can you make one for me? Michael replied with a smile. Of course. After closing the shop, Michael returned home. Tired but happy to see his family. His wife was in the kitchen, washing the vegetables and chopping them. While the rice boiled on the stove. Dinner smells wonderful, he said, leaning against the doorframe with a smile. The kids hurried in, excited to eat together. As they sat around the table, the children shared stories about their day at school. While Michael and his wife listened intently, 
After dinner, Michael sat with his wife and said, I have decided to go to the capital. I hope to find more customers there. And my earnings will increase. He smiled and added, I will give you some money for expenses. I plan to leave tomorrow. The next morning, Michael woke up early and walked into the kitchen. His wife was busy filling a pot with water for the boiled eggs, placing it on the stove and turning up the heat. While waiting for the water to boil, she took a bowl, poured in some cereal, and added milk on top, making it ready for the table. Once the water was boiling, she gently placed the eggs in the pot and kept an eye on them for the perfect boil. As the eggs cooked, she placed a pan on the stove and poured oil into it. Then, she cracked more eggs into a bowl, whisked them with a splash of milk and a spoonful of sugar, and dipped slices of bread into the mixture, frying them in butter until they were golden brown. Finally, she boiled water for tea, adding tea leaves and a spoonful of sugar and some milk letting it steep. Once everything was ready, she served Michael a plate with French toast, boiled eggs, and a bowl of cereal. Breakfast is ready. She said, smiling. Michael sat down and started to eat. After breakfast, Michael handed his wife some coins and said, Here's some money for the house. I will be back soon. Then he set out for the capital. Michael arrived in the capital and found a small one-room house to rent. He told the landlord, I will take it. The landlord smiled, saying, Welcome to your new home. One day, Michael met his neighbor while walking in the street. They smiled at each other, and the neighbor said, I'm glad to have you here. Later that day, the neighbor had an accident, and he whispered to himself, It must be because I saw that man's face. One evening, Michael entered the grocery store and smiled at the shopkeeper. I need some bread, two eggs, and a pouch of rice, please. He said. The shopkeeper nodded, adding up the total, and replied. That will be ten dollars. After Michael paid, the shopkeeper handed him a shopping bag full of groceries. That night, as the shopkeeper locked up, a masked robber burst in, demanding money. Shaken, the shopkeeper handed over the cash. He thought, That man's face brought me bad luck today. As Michael walked through the neighborhood, he overheard a group of people talking. 
Ever since that man moved here, strange things keep happening. One woman said. Another added. I lost my job last week. Maybe it's his fault. Michael felt uneasy but kept walking. Later, he saw an old man trip and fall. The man groaned. I saw this man's face just before I fell. It's bad luck! Michael hurried away, feeling more worried than ever. So, even though Michael was hated, his story was famous far and wide. The rumors reached the king's ears. He wanted to test if what people said was true. He invited Michael to the court and spoke to him politely. But just then, a messenger came running to the court and informed the king that the queen had been seriously ill. The messenger said, Your Majesty, you are requested at the queen's chambers urgently. The queen has fainted. And the physicians are unable to understand why. The king hurried into the queen's room, where she lay unconscious. But as he entered, she regained consciousness. The physicians stood nearby, looking worried. What happened to her? He asked. And one physician replied. We don't know yet. But we are doing our best. The king sat by her bed all afternoon. The king returned to the court. When the queen felt better in the evening. Michael was still waiting for him. But on seeing Michael, the king got very angry. He roared. So the rumors are true. You are indeed unlucky. You have made the queen ill. He ordered the prison guards to take Michael away. Suddenly, the wise minister walked to where Michael was standing and whispered something in his ear. Michael bowed to the king and said, Your Majesty, I am ready to go to prison. But after you have answered my humble question, if the queen fell ill because you saw my face, then is it not possible that I am being sent to prison because I saw your face? The king realized his mistake. He let Michael go and gave him a bag of gold from the treasury. Once again, the people in the court praised the minister's wisdom and intelligence. Moral Misunderstandings can cause unfair blame and problems for innocent people.